peso is not weak because the peso is weak. The peso is weak because the dollar is strong. The dollar is strong for two reasons. Kapag may crisis po sa ating bansa, uh, hindi, kapag may crisis po sa ating mundo, uh, the impression that investors, consumers, and um, and shareholders get is that the dollar is the safest currency to get against all other currencies. So, ang nangyayari ay lahat ng mga tao kapag may crisis, bumibili ng, ng dollar. Kapag, bumibili yung, kapag binibili yung dollar, ang demanda ng dollar tumataas. Which means, against other currencies, it becomes stronger. Now, kung nakikita mo ang trend ng USD sa trend ng mga iba't ibang currency, ang British Pound, ang Euro, ang Yen, ang uh, Yuan, ang trend po, <laughs> Wala, walang whiteboards sa sana. <laughs> ang trend po ay ang dollar gumaganon. Lahat ng ibang currency, lalo na sa Asia, lalo na sa Europa, ya lalo na sa UK, ay gumaganon. So there is an inverse relationship. It is not because there is anything wrong with the peso domestically. It's just internationally, dahil sa lahat ng nangyayari, dahil sa gera, um, ang peso ay humihina against the dollar. Mm-hmm. Pero kung pag-aaralan mo, the peso against the yuan, the peso mm-hmm. against the yen, mm-hmm. the peso against the British pound, makikita mo, medyo stabilized. stabilized. Mm-hmm. So, what can we do about it? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> on the bright side, marami tayong OFW dito sa Ilocos. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> ang remittances na pinapadala nila na dollar value <laughs> ay mas mataas. So, the remittances are worth more. On the other hand, alam naman natin, tayo ay net importer. Uh, so, temporarily, the prices of goods will be more expensive. It's partly to do with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, another explanation about it, I don't want to get too into it, pero nung pandemia, um, the Fed, uh, the U.S. government, nag-print sila ng, ng U.S. dollar. So, medyo dumami ang supply ng dollar. Eh ngayon, ang daming bumibili. So, yung daming supply became worth more. Which is uh, essentially as a result of what happened. What can the Philippines do to uh, help it? Uh, sa totoo lang, uh, I'm gonna be realistic with you. We... Maliit na bansa lang tayo. We have a significant amount of dollar reserves. An option would be, potentially, to sell off the dollar reserves to be able to um, taper. Tataas pa rin. Tataas pa rin yung value ng dollar. Pero hindi gaano kalaki kumpara kung hindi magagawin yung sinabi ko. Which is to sell off our dollar reserves. But, dahil nangyayari to, hindi lang sa atin, kundi sa lahat ng ibang bansa, kahit bibenta ka ng dollar reserve, walang masyadong maapektuhan. Dahil, ang dollar reserve natin kumpara sa UK, sa Europe, sa mga iba't ibang bansa ng Asia, ay napakaliit pa rin. So you have to think of it on a global scale and on a global level. Ang magandang, hindi naman maganda, but what's assuring is, is like I said, hindi lang tayo na sisikusyon na ganito. Lahat ng bansa ng ASEAN, lahat ng bansa na may Euro, lahat ng British Pound. Ang British Pound ngayon, nasa 28 year all-time low. Noon, one, naalala ko nung nandun ako, 1.4 to the dollar ang British Pound. Ngayon, 0.8. So, mababa talaga lahat. Lahat ng currency natin. So, I think uh, the best piece of advice would just be to sit back and hold tight. Um, uh, what the national government I know is doing is to focus on food security. Because as we are a net importer of certain goods and services, we have to make sure that domestically, <coughs> we are able to produce that. So yung mga iba't-ibang pagkain na nangangailangan natin, imbis na ini-import, hopefully, ay katulad sa sinasabi ng Pangulo, ay kailangan uh, patibay ng ating uh, value chain, ng ating supply chain para sa pagkain. And that entails uh, buffering uh, domestic production. Kaya kung nakita mo si um, Pangulo, ay gumawa ng EO, katulad sa, pa, pa, sa asukal. Lahat ng asukal na gagawin for 2023 ay for domestic consumption, hindi na importation. And that is to make sure that kahit nangyayari itong fluctuation sa ating currency, ay may access pa rin tayo sa pagkain.